Now, a big part of the collection focuses on George and Martha Washington, and we have a lot of relics that were personal items that they used in their day-to-day -day lives. Can you tell us a little bit about a few of these relics? Yes, this is a plate that Martha referred to as in common use, everyday china. This is a uh, Revolutionary War camp set uh, plate that Washington used and actually ate off of. These are uh, ivory miniatures of George Washington. My favorite is this one of Edward Savage, where Washington is actually sitting at a table with a map of, of uh, Washington, D.C. in it. This is a you know, very fine uh, jewel shoe buckle that was one of a pair that was actually given to George Washington for his first inaugural gift. And of course, there's Martha's riding veil. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, the riding veil is made out of handmade Brussels lace. It's approximately eight feet long. It uh, was used by her in carriage rides. And of course, there's this wonderful large lock of George Washington's hair that you have here. Yeah, this is the largest known hairlock of George Washington. It's nine inches in length. It's reddish brown hair. It's not like the way you see him with white hair. And of course, there's this wonderful Society of Cincinnati ribbon here. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, this was designed by Pierre Lafont also, and uh, anyone that was a member of the Society of Cincinnati actually purchased this and wore this. For the seeds of liberty are universally sown there, nothing can eradicate them. Thus wrote Franklin to his dear friend, Lord Kynes. The printer turned diplomat demonstrates here why he was one of the keenest practical political thinkers of his time. This is the earliest prediction of an American rebellion, a full eight years before the first shots were fired at Lexington. This letter is one of his most quoted and is used in almost every biography written about him. There are images of every single page of this great letter at our website, and I strongly recommend visiting and taking a moment to read the letter in its entirety. We're going to finish our tour today with this wonderful grouping of pistols and powder horns that date back from the Revolutionary War. Claude, can you tell me a little bit about this pistol? Yes. This is a double barrel flintlock pistol that was actually owned by Hugh Maxwell, who was a minute man, and he was wounded at Bunker Hill, in his left shoulder. He followed Washington across the Delaware and also was at Yorktown. Now, what about these horns? How did they get these intricate carvings? Well, engravers followed Washington's army and uh, were paid to actually do these intricate engravings on the powder horns. It's one of their earliest form of folk art. This 1777 engraved powder horn depicts Philadelphia Harbor during the celebration of the first anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. Its design includes three 13 star flags, making this one of the earliest artistic depictions of our stars and stripes. Thank you for spending some time with us today, visiting with Claude and Inez Harkins and looking at some of the items in the Freedom Collection. Remember to visit the webpage for the Benjamin Franklin autograph letters signed, which originated in this very important collection. For more information about collecting historical Americana, visit our historical homepage, where we currently have posted auctions for rare books, manuscripts, Civil War, Militaria, Political Americana, and Western.